Hello and welcome back to another Giant Slayer TFT video. Today we'll be previewing the upcoming synergies for set 7 Dragonlands. They've stuck to the same format as previous sets with 28 total synergies, several of which are tied to specific champions. The dragon trait is also special as it ties into the main mechanic of the set, dragons. But with every new set there will be reprints of old synergies. We will not be covering those traits since they're just reprints. Those seven synergies are Bruiser, Mage, Shapeshifter, Cavalier, Assassin, Cannoneer, and Guardian. While some of them we haven't seen since the earlier sets, all of them are essentially the same as they were previously. So that means everything else we'll be showcasing today is brand new. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started by getting into the first of the new synergies, Astral. Astral is a 3, 6, and 9 piece trait consisting of the champions Nidalee, Skarner, Vladimir, Nami, Ilawi, Varus, and Aurelian Soul somewhat of an economic synergy because every fifth shop increases the odds of an astral unit showing up and provides an astral orb. If the orb increases in the higher tiers, but baseline it's only a few gold, essentially covering the costs of rerolling. In addition to those bonuses, astral also provides bonus AP to your board. It's not much, though 9 astral is a decent amount. The real appeal of this synergy is being able to 3-star the astral units much faster than normal and playing a capped vertical board late game with Aurelian Soul. Up next, we have the Guild Synergy. The Guild is a trait that goes up by 1 per tier, up to 6, and consists of the champions Sejuani, Twitch, Rise, Talon, and Bard. Each Guild member provides a different bonus, which is then modified based on the number of Guild members active. This bonus is also doubled for that unit. For example, Rise increases the ability power of each unit on your board by 10 baseline. That is doubled for Rise and then modified based on how many guild units are on the board. As mentioned, each guild unit is a different stat, so you can pick and choose which ones you want to splash in for different bonuses. Overall, it's quite versatile as a synergy and is likely to be a solid splash trait. Jade is a 3, 6, 9, and 12 piece synergy, which consists of the champions Karma, Tarek, Ash, Nar, Anivia, Nico, Soraka, and Shi Ouyu. Yes, you heard that correctly, this synergy goes up to 12. Baseline, this trait has a movable statue that gives bonus attack speed to adjacent allied champions and heals every few seconds. The higher the tier of Jade that's active will increase the shielding, attack speed, and provide an additional statue. Jade can be quite bonkers with the healing and statues, though it does best so far in the early and mid game where the healing is most impactful. Moving on, the next synergy to talk about is Mirage. Mirage is a 2, 4, 6, and 8 piece synergy with the champions Leona, Yone, Nunu, Yasuo, and Deja. Mirage is one of the more unique synergies of this set, though its concept is the same as mutants from set 6. Every game, there will be a different Mirage variation. Those are Electric, Warlord, Pirate, Dawnbringer, Executioner, Spellsword, and Duelist. Each plays out different, again, like Mutant. The higher you go within the Mirage trait has different effects based on the variation of that game. Luckily, there is a new handy dandy UI element that tells you what the Mirage variant is for the game, so no more scouting and trying to figure that information out. Ragewing is a 3, 6, and 9 piece synergy that is one of the most carry focused traits of the set. It consists of the champions Senna, Set, Kane, Shen, Swain, Hecarim, Zaya, and Shivana. The unique aspect of Rage Wing is the champions don't have mana, instead they have a Rage Bar. Each attack generates Rage and at full Rage they cast their ability. During this time they're unable to gain Rage, so there's a forced cooldown between casts. While on Rage, the champions gain bonus attack speed and Omni Vamp. As we said, the synergy is overall focused on boosting carries such as Zaya and Swain, but with the unique mechanic of not having a mana bar. Next up is Revel. Revel is a 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 piece synergy which consists of the champions Tom Kench, Jin, Sona, and Corky. Anytime a Revel champion deals damage with an ability, they deal additional magic damage to a random enemy. Relatively straightforward as it's similar to how the Augment Luden's Echo works. Almost all of the Revel champions have AoE abilities, so Revel can dish out a lot of damage. Worried about dragons? Don't fret, Scale Scorn is here. Scale Scorn is a 2, 4, and 6 piece synergy consisting of the champions Braum, Lilia, Diana, and Olaf. As long as there's no dragon on your board, Scale Scorn units deal bonus magic damage and take reduced damage from enemies with high health. The amount of damage reduced goes up depending on the tier. Fairly simple and provides a counter to all the dragons flying around in this set. Another unique synergy for this set is Shimmer Scale. Shimmer Scale is a 3, 5, 7, and 9 piece trait with the champions Aatrox, Kane, Volibear, Zoe, and Idas. Why is Shimmer Scale unique? Because it provides Shimmer Scale specific items. Each tier increases the number of items with 9 Shimmer Scale also providing a crown of champions. All of these items are special though they usually have a gimmick that provides extra goal after meeting certain criteria. It's a tough synergy to work with but can be quite rewarding. 
Up next, we have Tempest. Tempest is a 2, 4, 6, and 8 piece synergy with the champions Ezreal, Kiana, Lee Sin, Orn, and Ao Shin. What's interesting about Tempest is it stuns the whole enemy board after a specific amount of time in the round. In addition to that, it does percent damage based on the maximum health of the enemy units. This percentage increases with the higher tiers. On top of all that, Tempest also boosts the attack speed of Tempest Champions. There's a lot going on with this trade, but honestly, it's pretty simple. Tempest units attack faster. At some point during combat, the enemy units will get zapped for the damage and stun. This makes it quite good as a splash trait for the extra CC and damage. Every set needs some type of summoning trait, and Trainer is that trait for Dragonlands. Trainer is only a 2 and 3 piece synergy with the champions being Heimerdinger, Tristana, and Lulu. When active, a new movable unit is summoned on the board, Namzi. Namzi is fed every round by your trainer champions, and after a specific amount of snacks, Namzi then goes up a star level. Scaling helps a lot to keep Namzi relevant throughout the game and provides a decent frontline later on, meaning trainer has a good chance of being a staple of the early and mid game meta. The final origin synergy is Whispers. Whispers is a 2, 4, 6, and 8 piece synergy that consists of the champions Thresh, Elise, Silas, Pike, and Siphon. This is quite the interesting trait as enemy units attacked by a Whispers unit will be shrunk, reducing their armor and magic resistance. Once shrunk, anytime a Whispers unit deals damage to that unit, they gain bonus attack damage and ability power for that round. The scaling effect goes for the whole round, meaning the longer a Whispers champion is fighting, the stronger they get. Because of that, scaling champions do quite well with a Whispers emblem, as well as the dragon of the synergy, Siphon. Let's move into the classes of Dragonlands, of which there are quite a few reprints that we talked about in our intro. The first class we want to talk about is Dragon Mancer. Dragon Mancer is a 3, 6, and 9 piece trait which consists of the champions Jade, Set, Ash, Lee Sin, Swain, Volibear, and Yasuo. When active, the player can choose to give the Dragon Mancer blessing to one of the champions, which gives them bonus health and ability power. Those bonuses increase each tier, though baseline the amount is quite good, so it's common to see just three Dragon Mancers. Concept is not new since it's similar to things like VIP Debonair or being a chosen unit. Voker is the mana generator of this set as a 2, 4, and 6 piece synergy. It consists of the champions Anivia, Lulu, Sona, and Aurelian Soul. But Evoker doesn't work like one would think since only Evokers gain the mana and it's only when units cast an ability, friendly or not. This means Evoker is not really a splash synergy since it doesn't help the rest of your board, only Evoker units. That limitation definitely makes it unique compared to other somewhat similar synergies from previous sets. We've seen Guardians before, but they aren't a reprint in design, just name. Guardian is a 2, 4, and 6 piece synergy consisting of the champions Tarek, Leona, Braum, Thresh, and Idis. Once per combat, Guardians will shield themselves and the closest ally for a percentage of their maximum health. This amount goes up per trait tier. Essentially, Guardians are meant to be one of the frontline synergies of the set, though there's a massive lacking aspect of those champions, CC. Thresh does have his hook, but only to one target. Guardians instead are a more utility defense than CC, which may hurt their value in the long term. Legend is only a three-piece synergy with the champions being Nivea, Volibear, and Orn. The interesting thing about Legend is when active, the Legend unit basically eats a nearby ally. This can be manipulated easily, so don't worry about accidentally eating the wrong unit. But once they've consumed the allied unit, the Legend champion gains 100% of their health, armor, and magic resist, plus a percentage of their ability power. Basically, Legend units eat and get super strong. This is quite interesting, but also means you're potentially down 3 units if you want every Legend Champion gaining bonuses. More than likely, Legend will be tough to play effectively and likely require a lot of balancing. Next up is Swift Shot, a 2, 4, and 6 piece synergy consisting of the champions Ezreal, Ash, Twitch, Varus, and Zaya. This is the quintessential attack speed synergy of the Ascent, with each Swift Shot champion gaining bonus attack speed. The twist is this is like Sniper, and the amount gained is based on the distance the unit is from the enemy they're attacking. Sniper was often a fake trait, so it'll be interesting to see how Swift Shot plays out and if we'll end up in a similar place as Sniper. Warrior is a 2, 4, and 6 piece synergy with the champions Aatrox, Shen, Yone, Olaf, and Yasuo. Every time a Warrior attacks, they have a 25% chance to increase the damage of their next attack. Each tier increases the bonus damage as the chance always remains the same. Nothing special here as it's just an auto attack based synergy that deals extra damage occasionally. A bit underwhelming compared to a lot of the crazy synergies, but sometimes simplicity is a necessity. The last four traits we'll be covering are the special ones of the set, as three of them are per individual champions, and the fourth being one of the features of the set. Up first is Bard. Bard is, well, the special trait for Bard. This is an incredibly unique synergy, as each surviving champion has a chance to create a dute. Bard also creates dutes when dancing. Each dute increases the odds of your shop for higher tier champions. 
for example, if you're at 1% odds of finding a five cost at level seven, and for whatever reason you have a bard, anytime you gain a dude, that 1% can be increased by one. Basically, the longer you have bard active, the higher your shop odds go, making it easier to find high cost champions and may lead to more four and five cost three star units. Up next is Spell Thief. Spell Thief is a unique synergy for Zoe, as Zoe doesn't inherently have an ability of her own. Instead, she will randomly cast a unique spell from a specific pool that changes every cast. Spells like Lux Laser from previous sets or Summoning Daisy. With spells she casts as random, you can see what spells she will cast first at the start of a new round. This makes Zoe quite unpredictable, but the spells are all quite powerful, which helps a lot in making Zoe stand out as a 5 cost unit. Next, we have Starcaller, the synergy for Soraka. Starcaller heals you once per combat round. The amount is relatively small, though a level 3 Soraka essentially heals you to full. Healing your own health isn't new anymore since augments came around, but it is completely new on a champion. The potential issue is that Soraka may lead to games going a lot longer, though the heal is small enough at lower levels that this may not be an issue. Finally, we have the Dragon Synergy. This is one of the features of the Dragon Land set, and to have the trait active, players can only have one dragon on their board. The dragons are Deja, Idis, Shi-O-U, Siphon, Aeoshin, Aurelian Soul, and Shivana. Dragons do take up two slots on your board much like Colossus, but unlike Colossus, they do a whole lot more. Each dragon provides plus three to a specific synergy, and they all gain bonus health. This is a split between the dragons, as the first four we listed cost eight gold, while the final three cost ten, so there is a power difference. Overall, a really cool trait, and one of the better set-specific traits we've seen in TFT. That's all for today, folks. Overall, this set has a lot of unique synergies and so far has been a blast to play on the PvE. There's a lot of emphasis on vertical traits, especially since dragons provide plus three to specific ones. This may not be an issue, but it is worth considering. Let us know what synergy you're the most excited for in the upcoming set, Dragonlands. Remember to check out the Giant Slayer TFT socials in the description below to keep up to date with any news, shows, or other content. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to like button subscribe. Use your Giant Slayer TFT videos. Thank <laughs> you.